So it's 6.02 on Thursday, February 5th, 2024. First. 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 Oh, I'm on the wrong thing. Thanks, guys. Uh, 6.02 on, actually 6.03 now, on Thursday, February 1st. Um, we're meeting in the lower, li low, lower level of the Rutland Public Library in the Blair Room. This is a joint meeting with FinCom and the Select Board. It's our first um, budget, operating budget uh, presentation in the hearing. So um, we unfortunately do not have live streaming access available today, but we are being recorded for uh, rebroadcasting re on local cable as well as YouTube and, and any other options. The budget book it is available online for anybody that wants to look at it. Um, and we can, do you want to open and then we'll yeah, start please. with the flag? Um, so at 6.03 um, on the 1st of February, I'll open the FinCon meeting. And I don't think there's a flag in here right now, so. No. Just in the picture. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I think that we can count that. No, <laughs> um, so I think <coughs> FinCom, if you are comfortable looking at your minutes, I think you have minutes. We'll do our minutes on our Monday meeting. Um, I'll accept a, a motion to. Do we have minutes? Do we have minutes? Yep. Yeah. 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 Okay. So I'm a little bit behind, but December 14th oh, and January 22nd. Oh, okay. Okay. I'll accept it. <coughs> I probably have them, Karen. I know, but this is what we got. <laughs> she always prints. Right, so I'll, uh, I'll accept the motion to, um, I'll obtain a motion to accept the minutes of December 14th and December 22nd. January 22nd. January 22nd, sorry. Well, I think there's an issue with December 14th. Which is down at the bottom in the financial forecast. Um, Where it's underlined. No, that's not. That wasn't wrong. He did say that. It's just not the truth. Uh, not the case. So did he? Okay. Uh, but free cash is in the in this budget. It is, but that's not what he said on that day. So what should it? So, so what should? Oh, I had it in my mind that. You weren't going to use free cash. It all, um, you were going to use free cash, but so I must have misunderstood that. Um, so if that's what was said, then that's fine. Okay. So. A second. Okay. So motion been. Who made the motion? I'm sorry. Yeah. Who made the motion? You have to make the motion. Oh, I have to make the motion. No, oh, I make the motion to accept the minutes of December fourteenth. Okay. You want to do one at a time? Okay. All right, some, do we have a second? Second. The motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? Other than the discussion on what was in the, the forecast section, which seems to have been resolved. Okay, without any objections, I'll take a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Unanimous, I will vote. Aye as well. Okay, and uh, now for the minutes of January 22nd, 2024, uh, I can't, I wasn't here for this one, so I can't vote, but I could still... You, you're still the, the member, so you okay. have to make the, you have to okay. entertain. So, um, I'll, I'll entertain a motion to accept the minutes of January 22nd. Vote to accept the minutes of January 22nd. Second. Motion's been made and seconded to accept. Any discussion? There being none. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Perfect. Um, the minutes have been read or been acknowledged and uh, accepted. Alex, back to you. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know that your anything's back to you at this point, so oh, okay. we just got the minutes done. Yep, perfect. Thanks. We just opened and we come to the minutes. Yeah. 
Um, so then it looks like moving in to um, the fiscal year 2025 budget discussion. Um, the first agenda item is the operating budget with the town administrator's initial presentation and the distribution of our budget payments. Uh, good evening. Uh, thank you, uh, members of the Finance Committee and Select Board. Um, happy to share the uh, recommended fiscal year 2025 budget. Uh, just a reminder, this uh, is for fiscal year ending June 30, 2025, so just a little while to go. Um, before I begin, I just want to thank um, both of you for your uh, participation in the process um, from several months ago, um, town departments, um, Tamika especially, um, for making sure that the office continues to run smoothly as I was talking about um, this budget process and got so I just want to start off by thanking all of you. Um, so uh, what you have in front of you and was shared last night electronically and has been shared publicly on the town website, um, rutlandma.gov slash finance, is um, the town of Rutland's very first budget book. Um, some of the key features in this 175-page document are, as uh, was questioned before the start of tonight's meeting, um, some key features that are included in the Government Finance Officers Association's uh, best practices for a budget book. So that includes you know, things like uh, uh, information and edu educational items like a citizen's guide to the budget, um, an overall mission of the organization, departmental descriptions, uh, multi-year financial budget to actual reports, uh, and a capital improvement plan, just to, to name a few. There's a lot of content in there, uh, so I hope you have an opportunity to take the time to uh, digest it. I know that we'll get into a deeper discussion. So just uh, to take a look at has, what, what has happened and, and what we're expecting to come over the next few months. Uh, so we started this process in August with the select board setting their goals. Um, this took a couple of meetings for the board to consider after board and commission uh, feedback, departmental feedback, um, and ultimately an opportunity for the board to consider what they would like to accomplish over the next fiscal year. And when we, uh, as town staff, consider these select board goals, uh, we take those uh, as form of a policy direction for the budget process. Uh, so uh, the department uh, at town department head meetings had reviewed these goals and went over the initial process. Also in August, we sent the initial capital manual and instructions beginning the capital planning process uh, to all town departments receiving almost $30 million in capital needs. Uh, in October, the budget manual was sent to town departments, um, instructing for things that eventually became included into the budget book, um, information to inform all of you and the general public. We then started to do initial departmental reviews of department budgets uh, with uh, myself and, and members of the finance team, uh, and then also uh, mid-December we presented kind of the initial fiscal projection. Um, so at that time we were in a much different position um, and as uh, information has become a little bit more clear obviously that informed the budget process as we went over the next few months. We're here tonight for the uh, recommended fiscal year 25 recommended budget capital plan uh, and on the 12th we'll have a budget workshop with the finance committee. All town departments will have an opportunity to present their budget requests to the finance committee uh, in the general uh, public as well. Um, I suspect that there'll be some more budget workshops, but I, I will kind of leave it up to the Finance Committee um, to determine what they would like to do in terms of next steps for the budget. Um, but ultimately, this leads up to May 4th, uh, which is the annual town meeting date. Hopefully, we have a smooth budget process. This isn't worth at all. Um, so the select board goals. Uh, we talk about them, we consider them, but I, I want to remind everyone what they were. Uh, they're on the uh, town website, www.fetlandmma.gov slash uh, SB for select board. Um, I won't go through all these, but I, I felt it's important just to highlight some of the um, uh, goals that were included. Uh, investment in capital, improvement in staff morale, modernizing town government. Uh, you'll note uh, we've accomplished some of those things already, especially on modernizing town government. We established a very first official long-term financial planning model. Uh, we went through a formal budget process and created a, a formal budget book. 
um, the, the select board and finance committee and other boards and commissions and town staff uh, in just two weeks from now will be in this room tonight to consider a comprehensive set of bylaws which is another goal so I also want to give a lot of credit to boards and commissions the select board and town staff for doing a lot of uh, good work um, to accomplish a lot of these goals there's a lot of goals um, and mm -hmm. uh, certainly I think for me every time I walk into the office I have them taped on um, a bookshelf and I worry that we're not doing enough but when you really take a step back we're doing a lot as a community so I just want to commend you all and thank you all. so the fiscal year 2025 budget um, has a handful of priorities one of the things that was very clear to me when, when uh, taking this position almost a year ago now at this point um, we have a lot of infrastructure and facility needs so this uh, fiscal year 2025 budget uh, recommends some investment in our infrastructure and our facilities. One of the first things in the water sewer enterprise budget um, is uh, appropriating some funds for modernization uh, improvements to the water treatment facility. Almost a 20 year old facility that quite literally needs to be manned every day. So we're looking to acquire some automation controls to allow for that facility to operate uh, much more efficiently and effectively. Uh, if you go to, into any of our town buildings, uh, you know that um, there's some needs there, uh, particularly the town hall annex um, has a very significant water feature, um, leaks almost every time we have rain or snow melt. Um, so uh, this, uh, this budget presents uh, an opportunity to uh, fix some of that. That's an emergency repair. Um, the Capital Planning Committee is recommending improvements to the Public Works Facility, appropriating from prior year articles. Uh, this is uh, supplementing a $200,000 Green Communities Grant for heating and efficiency improvements to the Public Works Facility. So this uh, funding will allow for the Public Works Facility to replace some of the door controls on the garage bay doors, but also some of the doors themselves, um, which are long overdue for repair and replacement. Uh, continuing on the capital strategy, looking to uh, replace uh, some equipment that has reached far beyond its useful life. Um, the two examples at the DPW are our facilities vehicles. If you've seen either our custodians or, or Mark in the sewer department drive around, you may not realize that those are town vehicles and town vans. Um, those probably shouldn't be on the road, so look, they're long overdue for replacement, and I want to thank the capital committee for recommending that. Uh, we also have uh, a near 25 year old uh, ladder tower truck. Uh, it, one of its first calls was to the cold storage fire. Uh, 1998 vehicle uh, that is also um, nearing its end of useful life and, and recommending um, a funding mechanism for replacement of that apparatus as well. Uh, this budget also implements uh, staffing um, and uh, compliance efforts for our stormwater. Uh, MS4 permit, fully funding for a full year, our stormwater enterprise fund, uh, and with, with that increasing hours to the conservation agent and um, providing for um, some efforts related to stormwater coordination overall, uh, and the funding mechanism is, is to be uh, funded through the uh, supplemented by the stormwater enterprise fund. And then also recognizing that we're in a challenging year, we're maintaining level services uh, purchase services and supplies for most budgets will remain level from last year's requested budget. Uh, I also just want to highlight that we also provide a significant tax relief program for our residents, whether it's our seniors, our veterans, uh, our elderly, well those are seniors. <laughs> um, there's a variety of abatements and exemption programs that we have available and I thought that this chart was helpful to show over the past um, you know, since 2015, we've provided several hundred thousand dollars in um, tax relief for folks. This year, we have budgeted $105,000, and that has continued as well in fiscal year 25. If you have any questions as well, please reach out to the assessor's office, uh, and they'll be able to assist you with tax relief. I mentioned some of the capital needs. Just thought it would be helpful to, to point people to the capital plan, which is included in your budget document. It's another 75-page component of the budget document. There's a lot of information in there to talk about all of our capital needs, the report of the Capital Planning Committee. Uh, in fiscal year 25, we're recommending $2.4 million in investments 
um, for capital infrastructure between our enterprise funds and our general fund as well. This is just an overview, so I'll quickly go through some of these of the $2.4 million uh, recommending uh, general fund bonds to be excluded for the latter tower replacement um, feasibility study for municipal services facility to include town hall uh, and possibly uh, the community center, uh, $35,000 from ARPA. Public works facility, $45,000 from ARPA for one of the facilities vans replacements. The other facilities van that is also uh, a sewer van to be utilized from retained earnings from water sewer enterprise fund. Uh, Reappropriating prior approved articles for the DPW garage bay repairs. Uh, and $150,000 from water sewer retained earnings for the water treatment flood modernization project. Uh, one of the long standing requests on the capital committee was installation of a school security system at all three schools. That's access controls and cameras. The committee did recommend funding that uh, and also identifying uh, some grant opportunities, but um, funding that from ARPA is recommended by the committee. And also if you have anyone who goes to Glenwood Elementary School, there's a playground just directly behind the school that cannot be utilized because uh, the surface is in need of uh, replacement. Uh, this is an uh, ADA, Americans with Disabilities Act project. Uh, we'll also try to supplement that with some grant funding, but for now, recommend to replace that uh, to uh, repair that for our performance. Totaling again, $2.4 million in capital uh, for the capital budget for the 425. Before I go into the next, any questions on capital? Can I ask a, a sure. funding source question? Um, at our last town meeting, we, I think it was our last town meeting, we voted to establish funds for each of the schools that we were given money from the district each year, which you subsequently said we can't do. So I think the source of that, that money is intended to use for parking lot maintenance and recreation purposes, right? Yeah, so it's parking lot maintenance, field maintenance, um, any other you know, necessarily, uh, necessary uh, repairs that would be needed or staffing costs associated with that. Would and playground I can, fall under that? I'm sorry? Does playground fall under that? I don't know. I don't think so. I think it's, I think it's just related to the parking lots and the fields. Specifically fields? Okay. Um, but I can certainly get back to the specific of that uh, lease agreement. Um, but I can quickly, if there's any questions, I know some people may not uh, have heard why that uh, I think there was an article at last town meeting to uh, appropriate those funds from the lease agreement with the Wachusa School District into a revolving fund with the thought that um, I think with the override in question, there was a thought that the lease agreement could go for the lease revenues could go into a revolving fund to make sure that that work continues uh, upon further consult with the Department of Revenue. Um, that is not <laughs> um, an allowable use of revolving funds as it's not related to particularly an activity like school lunch or um, some other programs and activities, you know, sports, things like that. Um, our recreation is an activity and that's a revolving fund. They do not consider this under the rules of Mass General Law to be an activity. Mm -hmm. um, so thus it goes back to the general fund as revenue. And that, it, just to reiterate, everything going forward also just goes to the general fund. And mm -hmm. so Correct. it's in some ways similar to ambulance receipts and the fact that it is kind of for a service, but it goes to the general fund. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Which is all fine. I just, my concern was that yeah, yeah. it get used for those purposes for the schools and yeah. not for something else. And that's why Joe wanted it set up <laughs> yes. that way. It was right. so that we could keep, make sure that it yes. was used for that because it doesn't get used exactly. for that right. typically. Right. If the, um, you know, certainly I think if the community wanted to pursue that um, effort further, I think one thing that has been done in other communities that's very similar is a home rule petition. Um, there are some communities that utilize their solar pilot revenues to go into a special um, revenue fund to be exclusively used for certain purposes, but that's done again through a home rule petition effort, um, and I don't believe that's been recommended at this time. 
because that also, just, just a reminder, that also does impact your general fund revenues. So that's 70 something thousand dollars um, that is reduced from our local receipts. So we just got to be mindful of that too as we uh, move forward with any future effort. I, I, if I, oh, sorry. Well, Tamika, we send all those warrant articles to KP Law, right? Before we put it on. So not to throw stones at KP again, but they didn't know this? I don't know. Well, they said it was okay to put it on the warrant. <laughs> I mean, when I pay a lawyer, I'm expecting them to give me, we're paying them for their expertise. Yeah, Otherwise, we could have had, I mean, sorry, but we could have had Tanika read the law and figure it out. I mean, seriously, you figured out plenty of stuff over the years, so, I mean. I think a lot of times with warrant review, it ends up being language more so than content content of the law so um, you know making sure that it's it's la the, the language is structured appropriately to achieve what the desire of <coughs> the community is especially I mean we, we know all know that the most important thing is the motion right so um, but I, I don't disagree with you that that maybe a little bit more due diligence should have been done on our part mm -hmm. I think we did the best we could. We thought it was a good idea. It's kind of the lawyer's job to say that's not a, a, an acceptable use. Sure. So, is there? Do we need to ask that question of the the law officers when you look at it? Just don't tell me the language looks good, but tell me about the content. <coughs> and then, is that going to cost us, you know, eighty percent more? Maybe. I, I think this is a learning lesson. You know, okay. when, we're, when we're playing with general fund revenue and we're looking to put it into a special fund, looking back and, and making sure we, I, I mean, the, the easiest thing is to consult DOR um, and to make sure that where money is going or where it's intended to go is appropriate. But <clears throat> my own concern is that it might be a little bit uh, misrepresenting the, or at least not acknowledging the, requi the request of the town meeting because as was been said, there was the expectation that it would be done, and now we find out, oh, geez, we can't. So um, I'm just thinking that how do we avoid that in the future? One way to, one way to avoid it, I would say, is, is instruct me and, and the DPW director to create a line item with that exact amount. Okay. Did you do that in this year? No. <laughs> Couldn't. Couldn't fit it in. No. Okay. No. Which which has been our problem for years, that's and that's right. the reason why Joe yeah. wanted to put it aside so yeah. that we could still do the minimum that we have to do. Yeah. But I'll say we're in a different <laughs> position. Obviously, as you as you go through, as you put a little different position for DPW. They they gain two um, new workers now. Certainly, two is not enough, but it's it's a lot better than what we were. Um, all of the new workers have full CDL, um, and they're able to do. Um, everything that's necessary of the Department of Public Works. Um, so I think also Joe was probably looking at this could be devastating to my department if the override doesn't pass. So, you know, that is an opportunity as well to whether it's contracting out or making sure that there's some sort of funding source to get that work done. So, um, but I think obviously now that the override's passed and we're in a much different position um, staffing wise, I think. Again, I wish I could knock on wood. I think hopefully we'll be able to continue that. Yeah, but this is even from all the Does that same situation arise under our contract with Wachusett, where they are, quote, required to provide maintenance up to 30 or repairs up to 35000 a year, and after that, we have to assume their responsibility? Because the reason I ask is, I can tell you, looking back over the bills and what they've done for this town, doesn't even rise close to that. So my thought is, if they owe us 35 to do all that work, why don't they give us the money and we'll make sure it gets done? Because they have not been able to do it. Well, that's what we're saying. They do give us the money. It Th just no. gets used for other things besides what the it's supposed to 35 grand be. goes into a special fund? No, no the no. 70, no. The 70 yeah. that we get that's supposed to be for clearing the, clearing oh, the parking it. lots, maintaining the parking lots, and keeping the fields, was not has not been spent on that for a number of years. Mm. I'm I'm talking about more than five. <laughs> well, You're talking about, talking I, think about our I think it's also I, because it's general fund revenue. I, th I think that it's 
you know, probably not fair as well to what you said or the rest of the town to say that it didn't go towards because it went to the general fund revenue. So you still funded in some respects right. your DPW. Certainly it didn't fund exclusively um, per that agreement, but it's not like we didn't use the money for something. Yes, it also went to police. Yes, it also went to fire. Yes, it also went to planning. Um, so the fact that we received it and utilized it for municipal operations, um, but unfortunately we, we weren't able to do what was intended. <coughs> um, but to, to, uh, to your this question about contract capital, issue, I'm trying yeah, to yeah. deal with. Well, I think so. That is another, I think, structural challenge that we have with um, being as a, a part of a regional school district and still owning the assets. Um, $35,000 is also probably not kept up with inflation. It probably should be a different figure at this point, but I'll leave that up to the powers that be to negotiate that with the other powers that be <coughs> from your partners. Um, but, but there's nothing we can do to set that aside. I mean, there was, no. They, there's got to be something. They have well, a, car, well, see, they have a contract for 35, but they don't actually spend it and they don't give it to us. Yeah. <coughs> so how do we enforce that 35? Well, that, so that 35 is only when related to capital projects. So if, if perfect example is the boiler that went. Yeah. Um, hey, we need a new boiler. Okay, great. Let's solicit quotes. Some came in um, 35 and one penny. Some came in at 40. So, you know, so as soon as it goes over 35, it's our responsibility to right. complete it. Um, but they don't front the 35 to us and then we pay the difference. It's if it's over a certain threshold, it's our right. responsibility. Yeah. And truthfully, a couple of plumbing issues replacing a couple of things that kids break 35 goes like this yeah i know that but we don't have it and there's no proof no that we don't do it. it they do it they we're not being called to pay for plumbing repairs you don't think that the, there's not plumbing repairs you know there is yeah, there's <laughs> that's some not routine. what i'm saying there's what some i'm saying is stuff, yeah. uh, as a capital plan we have no proof that they have spent up to thirty five thousand dollars on three school systems or anything related to that such as parking lots and stuff like or any maintenance work in the schools i did it i i requested stuff from them a few years ago and on average you know how much they spent of the three schools seven thousand bucks a year i looked at the numbers we're not they're not even getting close to 35. so when i look at the driveways which is what the capital uh, improvement committee looked at they were in disarray they really haven't been done anything of maintenance <coughs> for years and yet they have this 35 threshold that they've been pushing off so my question was is there anything we can do about that can we say give us the 35 and we'll we'll take care of it you don't have to worry about anything now maybe i think we'll have to look at the agreement itself to, to see if there's flexibility for that but i think the standard practice is schools said they have a need what's the price okay it's your responsibility so and i think if I'm, i think we as a town have been horrible about doing routine maintenance and preventative maintenance that would prevent projects from getting over a dollar threshold because we haven't had the funds to do them either and i think the district is in that same boat so i think we all agree on the town side on the district side everywhere that we all should be better at doing the maintaining our facilities along the way and not waiting until there's catastrophic <coughs> failure unfortunately we don't have the funds to always do that and the district doesn't have the funds to do it on their side either and so i think i'm i'm impressed with the new administration at the district and the communication that they seem to be having and understanding what issues we as towns not just rutland but other the other four towns are having it's not it's not going to be a quick fix unfortunately yeah and um, I, I know it's it's us and them but do you abide by a contract or don't you? We have a contract with them. Do we enforce it or don't we? But it comes down to black and white. I think I'm confused because my understanding of the contract is that for capital projects, if it's a capital project that is under $35,000, then the district is responsible for it. If it's a capital project that is over $35,000, the town is responsible for the entirety of it, not whatever is over and above the $35,000 it's the entire cost of the project if the entire cost of the project is over 35. So how many contracts, how many projects are under $35,000? None, because 
They haven't done anything with them. They wait until they're over 35, then they ask us to do it. So there's no proof, there's no accountability there. So my question, if, if we can't get the 35, what good is the contract? It's useless. I think um, one of the things I know, I think was discussed at either as in a subcommittee or, or school committee in general was, was um, in a lot of regional school districts um, appropriate some of their e and towards the capital stabilization fund to be able to make sure that they continue um, you know, working on some of these capital efforts. Because like us, we don't appropriate money every year in the budget for capital. They probably, I don't know if they do, um, but I would be surprised um, if they did. Um, so a capital stabilization fund and a commitment to fund it, uh, like what I hope that we can do at some point here, um, I'm just to, hoping that we can get to that at some point. Yeah, I think we, and to uh, Lee's point, I think the, Dr. Riley and, and his administration have done a lot of um, hard work over the past couple of years to kind of right the ship and, and make sure that um, they're good partners with us as well. And, and um, the line of communication since I've started has been excellent. Uh, whether it's a quick question or intermonthly um, meetings, there's a lot of shared information between all of us. So I, I really do appreciate their um, cooperation in, in all of this as well. So, any other questions or comments on capital? Okay. Um, so, what are our revenues? Um, we are projecting a 2.1% increase in revenues. It's approximately $586,000. Um, FY20. Property taxes includes a $2 million um, override. Uh, you'll see we have um, some, a reduction in our excluded debt. Uh, that is a combination of some town debt that has fallen off, as well as the regional school district. Um, the I believe it's the high school repairs um, has fallen off this year, so it's approximately $550,000 um, in a reduction of, in excluded debt. Right now, as of the H-1 budget from the governor, uh, we are seeing, while an increase in, in unrestricted general government aid, uh, we're seeing a slight increase in the state assessment, so that's you know, retired teachers, um, our regional transit assessment, so we are not seeing an increase substantially at all uh, in state aid. We are seeing a modest, uh, we're projecting a modest increase in our local receipts. Uh, just kind of looking at, uh, we did a five-year average of local receipts and also looked at some others. We have our uh, assessments for regional dispatch, um, regional animal control, some other um, you know, fees and, and uh, collect, collected local receipts, projecting a, a modest increase in locals. Uh, transfers in is, is mostly related to, um, you'll see a significant reduction. Some of the transfers in was um, the use of ARPA in previous years but also that includes uh, PEG access revenues. So that uh, $160,000 matches exactly the proposed budget for the um, cable access, community television budget. And then of course you do see the, the largest increase there is a proposed use of free cash to provide for a balanced budget. Any questions on revenue? So the budget is $28,435,073, um, a $1.1 million increase, approximately 4.1%. You'll notice um, some of the glaring substantial increases are in public safety. Those are most related to con contractual obligations uh, for wage increases, as well as um, just over 5.5% for um, preliminary educational assessments. I will note that we have not received final assessments from either school district. Um, what we have received is, and you'll see um, on the education page in your budget book, uh, we know our minimum local contributions for each school district. And for the Wachusett School District, we know the debt service. Everything else is an estimate, and I, and I can say I, I went higher than I probably should, just for the purposes of making sure that presenting a budget, hopefully we're in, a, we're in a good position there. Any questions on expenses? Sure. Going forward, uh, Austin, do you expect to see a 15% rise in public safety for every year going forward, or is this an anomaly? So we are about to start negotiations with the patrol 
and the sergeant's union. Um, so without compromising that process, um, I would say I hope not. I think there was a shift in the fire union contract, I believe, which contributed to a, a higher than you know the, the normal COLA percent increase. Obviously, this is the first year of the dispatch contract, um, which while I think generally was a 3% increase, um, overall combined three departments ended up being a, a you know, just over a 7% increase. Did we negotiate sure. any, with any of the union entities higher than a 2.5% increase in pay? The public safety entities or any, overall union? Not anyone you want. Um, so, I believe the DPW union was a 2% COLA. Uh, the dispatch again was, was a 3%. Um, <coughs> what was incorporated in that was we restructured the wage scale. One of the challenges that I think we have structurally townwide is the percent increase in between steps is 4.5%. 4.5 plus a 2% COLA, that's unsustainable. So they were the first union to agree to restructuring the wage scale. <coughs> But again, on average for this uh, for this year, it was a, a three percent uh, increase for most of the staff there. Um, some got less, some got three. Um, but everyone else has gotten. How can we, in good conscience, good. negotiate a rate right bigger than the two and a half that we can get every year? I'm sorry. How, in good conscience, can we bargain with these? give them an increase of over two and a half percent when we can't get that ourselves. I mean, we only can, we, we can only uh, go out and get two and a half percent, so how can we give them three? We're going backwards. Someone's going to lose a little bit here. Well, that's the cost of the contract, so that doesn't also, well, no, that, but I'm, so how that also doesn't include the contract then. That, sorry? So, so the wages, in good like conscience, we should never agree to a contract that's over two and a half percent. And I think in, in years ago, I think that that was somewhat done and there was so much turnover, which has a huge cost to, to town also. So it's finding a balance between maintaining staff and, okay, we're, you're going to get one and a half or two percent The pipe only comes in at two and a half gallons I, a minute. If you pay more than that, you're going to lose somewhere else. I know. Yeah, so, we, so Darren, I, th I think, remember, we went from on average a six and a half percent increase every year for employees to a three percent. Okay. So four and a half in between steps, again, as, as I just mentioned, is not sustainable. So a two percent COLA and a one percent in between steps, um, that was something we were able to negotiate, as well as some other things, as you know, with the, with the contract, mm -hmm. uh, some stronger management rights and, and um, some other language that I believe makes a, a better working environment for employees, but also making sure that management and administration has resources they need to make sure that the department is continuing to operate smoothly. So, uh, but I don't disagree with you. I mean, we, especially where we've got two and a half plus new growth with that jump being, let's say 4%, it doesn't leave much left for purchase services, supplies and everything else. But that's again, a structural issue that we have being a small town, so. So uh, you just said two and a half, three percent a bunch of times. How do you get from that, <coughs> those increases to a 15% year over year increase? That doesn't really add up in public safety. That is. Public safety. I mean, 15% increase <coughs> in the department. <coughs> so that's not all labor. Well, right. he said it was mostly union negotiations. Yeah, I mean, you, you can see the detail on, um, on each perspective. But that's 15% for public safety overall, yeah. right? So that's, um, well, there's contractual increases for wages. Um, and again, some of those are also department heads that have contracts as well. So that's not just labor unions, that's um, whether it's department heads and those other associated benefits that go with that over time. Um, for public safety, it's, it's um, one of the larger departments in terms of combined budget-wise. Um, so there's some other detail, obviously, as you go into each of those respective budget pages um, to show what that overall budget increase is. So. Is that just for this year, or is that expected for each subsequent year, that 15%? Well, again, I, I can't speak on the police because we working, are working on the contract there. Um, 
but um, but I believe the language in, in fire had a I think a step shift. <coughs> so I think we need to be Mark a little clear. Is what they said. Yeah, yeah. We just need to be a little clear. I mean, Darren's bringing up the point about two and a half percent, and that's on that's the levy and the value of the budgets. We're trying to keep things um, balanced, and I understand that. So fifteen and two and a half, and it doesn't total out, but when you start talking big numbers like that, you've had a big number go down in the in the debt service. So a lot of stuff offsets. It's you really have to look at the overall budget to decide where it goes. So. Makes more sense. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yes, sir. So, <clears throat> in that 15, in that public safety line, does that have any? Did the um, the safer grant have any effect on that number? Or I mean, um, I don't know what you. Are we finished with that? Or I think FY24 was the last year for the safer grant. So, for those who don't know what the safer grant is, it's a believe it's a federal. <laughs> A funded grant opportunity that provides, um, you know, starts I think with a substantial uh, subsidy from the federal government, whether it's a hundred percent, and then over several years it goes down to where, so you hire additional staff, but after several years it goes down to where the, the town is expected to fully fund. Um, that so, so if it was overlapped, then this is the first year of fully funding those new positions. I'm sorry. I said if, the, if last year was the end of the grant proper, then this would be the first year of the town having to fully fund everything. That we pick up the yeah. whole number. That's so I get, where did 15% come from? It's on right here. Percent change right here. Public safety. Public safety. Public safety. Public safety. Public safety. Oh, okay. This is, a, this is oh, oh, it's a typo. Sorry about that, guys. Yeah. What should it be? It should be seven. So page 24. 7.22. Page 24 of your budget book shows uh, okay. the breakdown for each increase. Yeah, that's um, correct there. For each department. I apologize. Long day. Long day. Two, two. Well, 15% uh, you had, you know. Good lord. Um, <laughs> well, that's why you're like 2.5, 3%. <laughs> I'm like, wait a second. Yeah, that doesn't have to 15. Well, it still doesn't have to 7, but <laughs> it's at least a lot closer. Yeah. <laughs> you're, still, you're still not, not going to get off free on that. It's just, even though it's half. Yeah. I, I, I have <laughs> well, the only thing I'll say is I didn't negotiate those. <laughs> <laughs> Couple of you did. Uh, so that's supposed no? to be 7.2? Yeah, that's yeah, 7.2. Yeah. Uh, Austin, I haven't a chance oh, to, just drill, one. Dispatch. to drill down, but that 7%, does that include benefits and ancillary stuff? Mm -hmm. You know, does that include the increase in the pensions? Does that, or is that strictly for no. that? So, so our, our pension and our benefits are in uh, the undistrib undistributed expenses line item, which is in our general government category. Uh, but no, just those, um, just those are wages, overtime wages in those respective departments. So it's probably more like the 15% yeah. we had. Right, right. That's, <laughs> what, that's why I asked you. Probably. Uh, Unfortunately, yeah, you know, it's not. It's not bad. Benny? Ask, ask what health insurance is going up this oh. year. Yeah, but that's, but that's a small, a very small portion of the overall, like the, oh, it, it, all it the pensions are pretty big. Number. Probably more like yeah. nine. <laughs> the pension's a big number. <laughs> Which so one of our budget drivers, um, I think, as I mentioned earlier, our estimated revenues are simply not keeping up with our um, some of our fixed costs uh, expenses. So as Karen mentioned, um, it's not exactly a ten. It's like a nine point six nine percent increase in our pension assessment. That's a hundred grand right there. Um, mm -hmm. Our rates for health insurance are up twelve percent. Um, their budget, you'll note, is slightly reduced due to right now the figures are uh, looking and trending to be lower for enrollment. Uh, we still did add um, an additional family plan just in case for next year, um, but uh, right now the rates are looking to be 12% for, for health insurance. Uh, we're a high claim general liability town for whatever reason. For, or for several reasons. And you're on a contract that you can't cancel for this year too. Yeah, this, this is, is our second, is uh, second two year, year contract. Yep. This is our second That's because we lose every lawsuit that we go with. That's why. <laughs> Maybe. So does every company. We need better lawyers. Definitely. So our 15% uh, our <laughs> increase in general liability, again, is also because we're a high property liability <laughs> claim in town. Uh, that's, I don't know, they're almost $50,000. And then, as I mentioned at the beginning, uh, 
um, five and a half percent educational increase, five and a half percent on a large number is a large number, um, almost a million dollars. And you know, there's some things I think that were talked about in previous years that just have not been realized yet. I think people were hoping to see some significant progress at the heights. Um, that is still slowly getting started. Um, we, I think, have licensing for three cannabis establishments, not retail. Um, one retail, two, I think, cultivation and, and, uh, or manufacturing. Um, those have not been realized in terms of sales tax revenue. Uh, and then also, um, our personal property, in the opinion of the assessor's office, is significantly undervalued. Um, so one of my proposals for ARPA will be to fund a consultant to help us with personal property valuations. Um, Thanks, buddy. There's a lot of revenue there. Oh, that, yeah. Um, yeah, just get it all. That is yeah. That's right. I, I know <laughs> it's my job. <laughs> I noticed sorry. over the years it was here, then it would go here, yeah. then it would go back up, and I'm like, how can the personal property valuation change like that? You got three million one year and six hundred thousand the following year, type of thing. Yeah. How does that change that much? <clears throat> Market. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and Thank candidly, God. I think this is the first year that that we have a full time assessor, mm -hmm. right? So we're not contracting it out. Um, so I think Amy has done a lot of good work to um, kind of yeah. set that off a straight and. Um, working with Mike to, to do some of the property inspections, and then we believe that um, there'll be a significant value and it actually will, will pay off significantly by having um, a company called RRC come in and help us with personal property. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so some of the cost reduction or efficiency measures that are included in this budget are um, shifting the conservation agent uh, from the um, general fund to be funded through the Stormwater Enterprise and also proposing to, to see if the Wetlands Protection Act Fund can also subsidize some of that uh, staffing costs associated. And then also some of our supplies and services that um, over the past year we've asked, for example, the Planning Board or Conservation Commission, we have some other special revenue funds to fund some supplies and services that support departments. Um, I don't know specifics on those, but something that we've been talking with town departments. Uh, to see if there's some other alternative uh, revenue sources for uh, whether it's acquiring new desks for folks or um, you know other office equipment or um, services as well. Yes, sir. Uh, no, I'll save it for you. I was going to ask you about the conservation. Why the conservation agent was funded through stormwater? Why are you changing the title? They no longer work for the conservation department, or what? I'm trying to. No, so so they still so. Um, as you'll notice in the budget book, we uh, I'm proposing a reorganization of our planning and community development office to be planning, community development, and conservation. Uh, so the conservation agent to report to the town planner. Um, but the, the the work of the conservation agent will still be to support the conservation commission, um, but also with the increased hours to be able to assist the town in some of our stormwater efforts. Um, a lot of the the work between the commission. Um, and our stormwater requirements are, are very similar. I think a commissioner in the room would agree. Um, so to make sure that we uh, are on top of things, whether it's reporting or uh, inspection of culverts, storm um, um, uh, catch basins, things like that, uh, we believe that those increased hours will help us tremendously. So that's why we're proposing the shift. Um, we have a, a, a significant, in my opinion, amount of uh, opportunity for capital projects to be utilized from whether it's our, our capital stabilization funds, um, retained earnings for our enterprise funds, and then there's still approximately a million dollars left of unspent ARPA funds. Um, that uh, the money will, we still have a couple years to spend, but I'll be proposing at a future select board meeting um, to utilize some of those funds for capital projects to make sure that we're continuing. And those include some of the projects that were recommended by CFPC that I mentioned earlier. If we don't use, excuse me, but if we don't use the APA, it goes away or what? Yeah. So let's get her done. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. And for clarification, I think sure. about half or a little bit more than that million has already been, was already kind of dedicated for certain projects that haven't been realized yet and so mm -hmm. um, voted on at previous yep. select boards, I think. And so whether that, work continues I think or what is the conversation at the future yeah well so the question is does it need to be spent or just committed so um, there's three things it needs to be 
the word is obligated. And what does obligated mean? It needs to be spent, uh, a contract signed, or a purchase order created. Okay. Um, Use it or lose it. Yeah. So that's the so point. So government's got, got, eventually going to come looking for it. If we've got commitments or we have a plan and the, or the boards have committed or <coughs> agreed to it, it doesn't mean anything until the document is signed. Right. Yep. Um, so, after, so by the end of this year, we have to obligate it. Um, and then by December 31st, 2026, it has to be completely spent. Okay. Um, but there's a strategy to spending it. We, to avoid a single audit, we need to spend less than $750,000 a year. So working with our finance team to make sure, because we don't want to spend the extra money on a single audit if we don't have to. Yeah. Um, so try to make sure that while projects are still getting done, we have a plan to spend such over the next uh, approximately, let's say two and a half or three years-ish. Um, one of the goals of the select board was to identify regionalization opportunities. I get calls all the time from town administrators or members of uh, neighboring select boards say, hey, you know, is this service available to regionalize? And we've had um, a lot of conversations. Um, so, you know, particularly our animal control, which is already a regional service. Uh, there's an interest from CMRPC to expand that possibly, so we're having some conversations as well to see uh, what that possibly could look like to expand that. Um, if you went to the MMA conference or just really follow local government altogether, uh, the municipal finance industry is um, one that is significantly challenging in terms of recruitment, so there's been some conversations to possibly identify regional solutions for members of the finance team. And then also recreation, um, all the towns around us do some sort of recreational opportunity. Um, so we've had some conversations as town administrators to see if there's ways that we can partner on programs um, and recreational opportunities. Um, certainly nothing, I think, to publicly announce tonight, but look to continue working with the select board to see if there's a deeper interest on, on your behalf. Um, and that would, of course, end up hopefully in some cost sharing opportunities and reduction in our budgets. And there may be some grant funding, because I know at the state level they yep. are really encouraging it also. So if working with CMRPC and the other communities can yep, take absolutely. advantage of. Yeah, the, and there's, you know, the, the state as well is, is just really pushing regional partnerships. So right now it, it would behoove us to take advantage of those while we can. Uh, this slide just I want to just highlight all the work that's been done by town staff um, just in the past year alone uh, 1.1 million dollars in grant funds uh, have been received by the community and candidly I don't even think that this encompasses all the grants that we've received I just did a quick email search with the word grant and this is what has happened in the past year alone um, you know whether it's for upgrades to facilities um, Technology upgrades, um, planning grants, um, increasing transportation services for our seniors and vulnerable population. I just really want to highlight, and this is $1.1 million that is not being spent by Rutland residents. So I really want to highlight that and, and um, give kudos to town staff for their work. Uh, last slide is just, oh, sir. Sure. How do you see that grant funding going next in 2025? I think we want to continue to be competitive. Um, we're going to apply for as much as we can. Uh, I had a meeting with CMRPC last week. CMRPC, the Regional Planning Commission, has a lot of money for technical assistance to help cities and towns apply for grants. Okay. So we'll be utilizing that, um, especially the federal grants that are a little bit more in-depth. They have the staff resources to be able to help us. So whether it's Mass Works or Community Compact, we'll continue to apply for those. Obviously, they're not guaranteed, they're competitive, but I think we have a lot of needs to hopefully make us competitive. So we'll continue. Sure. And Austin, to your point, CMRPC has a lot of um, funding available to, for the assistance, but the state also has created a, a whole <coughs> division for yep. the to access the federal funds and everything. So it's pushing it through. Yeah. Um, the state's really big on getting the money into the state also. So they're trying to partner with the communities. Um, it does take a lot of that money does take an investment on the town side. As we all know that whether it's the engineering or whatever, there is a, a <coughs> commitment to do it. Um, but then the realization is, is quite large. 
I mean, the reason I ask is so we're maybe six hundred thousand dollars down. So anything we can get that will help offset that for the needs of the town. So if we could get an extra six hundred thousand working with CMRPC and all those, that'd be fantastic. Because we're gonna be in a problem next year and the year after. Mm -hmm. yeah. yep. Absolutely. Uh, so I know we asked a lot of questions and had some good conversation, but if there's any other questions at this time, happy to answer. It's related to um, Community Preservation Act. You know, we are not <coughs> participating in that program, and I think it's been brought up in the past. But I know there's a you know a tax for the residents that it's involved with that. But isn't there also funding that goes along with that? Where if we were a participating community, that that yeah. could also be used? Yeah, no, I'd, so I, um, I'm a supporter of Community Preservation Act. Worcester just passed it, um, and <laughs> the program itself funds a lot of opportunities, whether it's for um, open space, which I know has been a huge um, request, I think, from residents, and every time there's a 60, Chapter 61 property, yeah. um, CPA would be the perfect funding mechanism for that. Right. Um, you also can fund recreation projects, historic preservation, um, overall infrastructure. So it's a really nice funding source. And I think a lot of the communities around us have it. Um, and to your point, Jen, it, it, um, there's a state match. Now, obviously, it varies every year. But based off of that local surcharge, which the town can decide what they want that percent to look like, mm -hmm. um, and then the state will match with a certain percentage of that. So that would be a great resource for the town for a lot of our needs. Um, but of course, there's a process to, to get that. Passed and too. the process, if I understand it, what had been a few years ago, a town meeting vote, and then subsequent, it had to be so long after the town meeting vote, a ballot question. So I think it didn't fit in the current scheme of having it at the spring town meeting and then the ballot question on that same election. I think um, that, and I don't. It's been a few years since we had looked into it because then we were looking into needing an override and everything. So, um, but I know it kind of circles back every year, and it's getting enough people that are interested in it at town meeting and then also at the ballot because is it something that we could explore more and have informational sessions because I know everybody's going to be up in arms about another tax but if it's going to go towards specific things that the town is asking for the open space the recreation things like that plus the matching funds from the state if we can just like a two and a half override if we can propose it the right way yeah no I, I mean, there's a lot of reasons the community preservation coalition which kind of is the statewide advocate um, in overseeing it, they do a lot of outreach yeah. and information sessions. I think the um, the Agricultural Commission has talked about it recently okay. and I think is looking to um, you know, do some sort of information session as well. So it, it, if there's an interest in, in the community and, and the select board, certainly I think we could have staff involved in that. Mm -hmm. Informing people. And I mean, worst case outside. scenario, it gets shot down at town meeting, yeah. but you're never going to know unless you do the due diligence to. Well, it it was either a ballot vote or a yeah, town was. meeting. It was a town uh, meeting. But a Warren article that got voted down. Yeah, I don't know yeah. how many years ago, but it was several years ago. I think that was, was when Margaret down. was here, wasn't it? Because yeah, yeah, Margaret, you so. were trying to do it for Davis. We yeah. were going to miss Davis Farm, but she wanted yeah. to get it started so that if another property like Davis came up. I think that's when it got voted down because yeah, I remember yeah. her bringing it up. It was Margaret that brought it up. Yeah, and I think, I think it was before that. Yep. Mm. Maybe. Yeah, that. I'm sure. Right. And I think a little bit of changing the narrative of yes, it's a an additional fee being assessed, but it's going to dedicated. There's dedicated areas in which it can be spent, and it's de those dedicated areas that we hear over and over again as being high priorities for. A lot of our residents and so they get shot down because we don't have any money right <laughs> so right right don't yeah. minimize the fact that people are going to see it as an increase in liability yes. mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. right they are going to see it that way and oh. it, then it's going to become a matter of how it gets marketed like the two and a half right. lines right. right i agree right. you're going to see the property taxes go up you don't want to hit them with too many things at the same yeah. time yeah you uh, so it but just like with i think you all did a lot of great work 
on when talking about the override, you talked about, for example, the abatements and exemptions, some of the tax relief options for people. There is the same mechanism for CPA. I think it's like the first $100,000 of your valuation is excluded. Um, and then there's other opportunities for relief for folks who, you know, something like a one, even if it was a one and a half percent surcharge may have an impact on, um, on your ability to, to contribute. So. So that all becomes part of the marketing of yep, that. Absolutely. And, and just one it's question. Like an educational campaign for sure. Uh, one question on the, uh, you made reference to the heights over here. True. And that it's delayed. Any particular reason why? I mean, this, the housing market is good. Um, why isn't it pro pro proceeding maybe a little bit quicker than it is? I, I, I don't know the specifics. I think. From internally, I think we're certainly, uh, staff in the building department is certainly working with um, the developer to make sure that whether it's plans are in order, permits are in order. Um, but I, you know, I, I know that they're, as a developer, they, I think they had a sales event here. They want to get moving too. Um, I think they've sold four homes, so you know, they want to get those built. They want to build the model home. You can only sell so much when you're looking at a sheet of paper, but you can sell a lot more when you actually have the model home and some of the others. So, oh, that's true. Um, so I think, and it, it, maybe a little bit of it is just unrealistic expectations at the beginning. We'll have this, you know, 50% built by such and such date. Um, where I think now that we see a little bit more of a plan, um, maybe over the next year or so, we'll have a better idea of what the position will look like. From it's just that there was a certain amount of anticipation of revenues. Yeah. Yep. And, cer and certainly I can't, I didn't plan for any of it in yeah. calculating the levy because I can't. Right. Well, so. And you shouldn't have. Yeah. You right. can't cut your chickens before they hatch. I right. mean, let's, I mean, we'd like for all big built like, It's going to take time. Yep. And, you know, obviously from an economic development strategy, when that's built, or even as you start to see progress, what does the rest of the highest property look like? Um, so, Hopefully, it's good news, but because we have no idea what that looks like over the next year or so, it's really hard to plan from the financial side. So, okay, thanks. Uh, if I may, uh, Peter Crane, Nate's way. We um, three years ago, I think, we started looking semi-seriously at Community Preservation Act. Mm -hmm. The amount that you can exempt is determined by the town. Um, and at that time, the select board was not in favor of it, but that's beside the point. Um, it's a complex problem of how much money you want to get and how quickly to be able to purchase something. So there's a lot of forward thinking that goes into it. We, at the time, were talking about one half of 1% as, as the surcharge for Community Preservation Act. I have no idea what it would look like today since there was no exemption that we knew exactly what the dollar figure was going to be. And if there is an exemption for any amount of property values, then that number would almost certainly need to change. But yeah. And I will say in previous, in a, a, co a couple of years ago, conversations with our state legis leg legislative team and asking for, is there any mechanisms on the state side to help preserve, you know, the state is very big mm -hmm. on housing mm -hmm. and very big on land preservation. And those two, we see how hard that is in town here. And so is there a mechanism through the state to help preserve open land that really is justified to be open land? And they said there is, but you don't have CPA. And so until you have CPA, you, you're not showing, the town's not showing the state any commitment that right. we're actually serious about. Yeah. And at that time, the board had zero interest in, in it. And it's one of those things that comes cycles back periodically and it needs to be sold and i think i personally am all in favor of it and also realized that we had a two and a half override we instilled the stormwater mm -hmm. utility like people have gotten hit hard yeah. this mm -hmm. this year so yeah. the timing piece and really making sure that we have a good team of people that are in favor of it and can explain it and support it and mm -hmm. and that we have a plan like 
And, and I'm not suggesting it's something that we have to, to look and put on the warrant for the spring meeting, but right. if, if it's something that we can start talking about again yeah. to come up with how can we present this? What would we be looking at? Can we give some examples of what could be funded with money? How much could we expect to get? Right, right. And Just looking at the timing, like maybe mm -hmm. does it make sense to have it on a fall town meeting for the spring election versus the spring election and then having to wait a whole nother year for for the election? If you it, know, like if it's going to require planning, it would right. be good to just try and get ducks yep. in a row to understand the process and yep. when the timing would be good. Yep. Yeah. I will also say, five, it was for my last comment, one of the reasons that, or the big reason that CPA discussion did not move forward was because that was the year of the aborted two and a half override. So they, nobody's willing to put CPA and an override in the same cycle. That's understood. When we have um, contracts such as our, <clears throat> our IT services, did we go out and see if we could get anybody different, better? We just stuck with who we had. Not at this time, yeah, yeah. I've got larger battles in terms of procurement that I think I need to address first. Um, I think we have a good service with IT. I think they do a good job, uh, but certainly, and, and, the, and that's one thing that we're also exploring from a regional position as well as to see if we can get better service from IT, but um, certainly not in a position to make a budget change or recommendation now. And where is that located? I, I don't know which, where is that located in here? Uh, that should be in the town administrator's budget, um, or one of the subsequent pages after the town administrator. Or I just forgot to include it, and it'll be in I was gonna say I don't see it, but okay. that doesn't mean anything. Yeah. That's why I was asking. Is I'm like I don't see it because yeah. <laughs> it's it's a big change, and so I just figured I'd ask. <clears throat> About the the old nugget, the old insurance thing that we were gonna try to get. Ladies to my right had a plan that they could save some money. You and me. Yeah. <laughs> Skipping over Peter. Um, they had a plan that, or an idea that we could save some money on insurance by. I don't know. Oh, the HRA. Yeah. Did that ever happen? Nope. Well, we're on we're on a health care plan again this year on contract from last year as well, so they can't change anything. With the so change in the staff that's going to happen, we might be able to bring it up in a year but she wasn't willing to make that change because she thought it would be negative. Whereas with an HRA, you can save money. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think in terms of overall insurance offerings and, and plan design, I think there's a couple of opportunities. I mean, I know some, some people have looked at the GIC. Is that um, <coughs> an opportunity for the town to consider? But um, with the transition of the treasurer collector's office, addition, of an HR uh, coordinator, we are looking at shifting some of those responsibilities uh, to allow for treasure collector to do their work and, and HR related to a lot of the benefits and payroll. Um, so that's, I think, certainly a goal is to explore that and see. Ultimately as well, I mean, as, as you all know, it has to go through the insurance advisory committee. So um, whatever we would do for kind of plan design, we need to make sure that it's bargained and that the, you know, works for the employees too. So. That's an advisory committee. The, which makes a vote. vote. They vote? Yeah. They yeah, but yeah. it doesn't. No, it's not. <laughs> they yeah. vote to accept it. This yeah. Like yeah. It's not yeah. companies with advisory committees. Well, but tell, yeah, but, but tell, and I'm, I'm sorry to speak like this, but tell the select board that, that the employees voted against it. I think you have a challenge in terms of we, we organization. Tapped, we did. Yeah. Well, we do I, and we did. Yeah. <laughs> and I think I actually heard about that. Yeah. 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 Um, but I think in, in any of those conversations, we talked about kind of, going into any of those conversations with this is what what you're paying and this is what you're utilizing of what you're paying and it's the same conversation i know the the district is having in in heck and everything i mean when, when i hear about we need to have informational sessions for cpa we need to have information those sessions for the staff to understand if we put in an HRA we upped this but we were paying for the last half of this you're really paying nothing more you're going to make out the same way or maybe even a little bit less but it's all about education even better just go to a, just go to a state state plan 
My company's all on individual plans now. Yeah. And I'm paying half of what I was paying a year ago. Less than half. And the company's saving about half of what. But I mean, that's the thing. <laughs> it's, it's, it's also about having the broker or whoever come in and educate. sell it to the, right. educate <coughs> yeah. it and sell it. And, I, you know, and I don't think that's happened in the past, in my opinion. Well, and I think now that we have an HR coordinator on, that, and I don't want to add to her workload, but I think also there's an opportunity there to say, I know um, if there's data out, I don't have it there, but that a majority of people are overinsured. We're all paying a lot more than we would need to and for what we need. And so there's, oh, there has to be a better way. And it, and it benefits the insurance companies, right? So <laughs> like, cause I know I brought up when we did it at our company, cause it's the only way we could afford it. We had the HRA where we paid the last, we increased the deductible, but we paid the last half. And it saved the company money and it didn't cost the employees any more than they were already paid. Yeah. And it wasn't, truthfully, once you got the people to sit down and look at the stuff and then come and ask questions, it was an easy sell. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, my, I think in one of the goals of the board as well is to look at how do we remain competitive too, whether it's compensation or benefits overall. Um, and certainly as a part of that is, you know, one of the first questions I get when we're interviewing people is, what does your insurance look like? So. Um, while it needs to work financially for us, um, it also, to remain competitive in terms of recruitment, we need to have good benefits for people. So yep. I respect the balance, um, but also I'm like, I want to keep staff. And that's a big part. I mean, when we sure. moved to ours, it was still Blue Cross Blue Shield. Yeah. And it was, and it cost the employees nothing more. Yeah. Yeah. And it saved the company money because the people who go over that additional thousand dollar deductible are very slim and you're saving a lot of money yeah. it's I, amazing how you do that I will still advocate for what we did it was a it was a, a tough process and I think it's a newer thing for companies to look at so it's that there's no there's nobody that's doing it great yet but I went from a six thousand dollar family deductible plan paying two hundred dollars a week out of, and I paid two hundred dollars a week my employer portion was 70%, so what is that, like 700 a week? So we were paying 17,000 a year, just me, and then there was another, I don't know, it, it was like 22 grand a year total, something like that, plus a $6,000 deductible. I now have a $0, zero dollar deductible plan, and I'm paying less than half of that. And my company is paying less than half of what they were paying. Mm -hmm. Everyone, literally everyone won. Mm -hmm. There were very few people that, the, some of the older folks did lose out. Um, of course. Mm -hmm. Because they cost more in insurance. It's true. But we do. It, it was an effective thing. So we, like all the younger people are now paying literally nothing for insurance because mm -hmm. they're, they get to choose whatever plan they want. It's an individualized mm -hmm. plan. So you go out and you buy a plan from the market. That's what it is. So I, me knowing that I'm having a child, mm -hmm. I went and bought a full deductible plan, or a full plan that I don't have to pay deductible because I know I'm gonna have outrageous healthcare costs this year. So it was good for me, it was good for, it's good for everyone really, because they get to individualize, which is always a possibility. Except if you're old, Pete. Except if you're old. Jeez, don't more anybody seasoned, get old. More seasoned, more <laughs> seasoned. The old, the old. It, it wasn't bad, it just, it like, they, I, I'm pretty sure the rates were, they didn't pay more. I think it was they didn't save anything. Oh, I, I, know. Just, I know. So I know I bring this up every time in the property tax thing. You've said it a couple times tonight that you, do you guys have a, do we, by town meeting time, are we going to have, someone's going to ask a question, do you expect property taxes to go up? So are we going to have a number or a percentage or things like that over the next couple of years? Or is that, because people are going to ask, they always go up. They've yeah, gone up every year that I've will, been here. Will go <laughs> well, not, well, yeah, but how big, how, if he's like, going to be evaluated, like, how, how big is he going to, I'd like to know what it's going to be. My my taxes went up $2,500 with this last year. That's Granted, I have an addition, so that's, but that's no, on top no, of the whole thing. Uh, yes, <laughs> I understand. $2,500 is a lot to swallow right now. Yes, so is it, but if, if next year it's going to go up 5000 
Oh God, I hope not. <laughs> no, but I mean nobody knows. That's what the. But when you use six hundred and two thousand dollars of one-time funds to so, balance the budget, right. that sets, sets up a structural deficit, guys. That's right. Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll just remind. Uh, the uh, harassment we, just, we all took the year that we did four hundred and eight. Yeah. It was horrendous. This is a lot more. That's a much bigger nugget to swallow. Mm. Yeah. yeah, if anyone has recommended funding sources to fill the $620,000 gap, I'd be happy to hear it. This is something that I, I told both boards and committees about in December where we were. Um, and the position has gotten a little bit more challenging, I think, um, on educational assessments. Um, let's hope for better news on <laughs> both of those um bay path was one hundred sixty thousand um, dollars and what you said was just on minimum local contribution was four hundred something thousand dollars and that's for something that we can't even determine um so let's hope for some good news um, over the next few months but for right now yes that is the proposal to, to fill the gap level services budget um while still providing um, a modest increase for staff salaries, um, I'm proposing to, to fill the gap with, with free cash. Certainly not unprecedented. We've done it virtually every year. Um, certainly not to this extent, but we're also, I think, still very much in a transition year um, from passing an override and realizing that the economy is still not there and there's some revenues that we know are on the table, but not yet. So, so the, we get asked, the expected override help was going to go for a couple of years, two, three, four years. It didn't even last um, year. What's that, Karen? It didn't even last a year. All right. So who's going to stand up and tell everybody that? All I have to do is walk around and get that question all the time. I know, but so we're yeah. so already we're behind the <clears throat> paper. Yeah. Well, I, the, you got. I mean, we people. had to do it, but it didn't last. <clears throat> you no. got to ask those people, <clears throat> Darren. What are the schools going to be next year? What's our enrollment going to be next year? That is the largest part of our budget. It's sixty percent of our budget. So again, even a small Did it go up to sixty percent this year? It's, it's it 59, was fifty nine point eight something. Yeah. yeah. Okay. But that's the same questions that sat here in this room last year. Right. That we asked those questions. Yeah. And we were told, "Don't worry about it. Two and a half will be enough. If we get this override, it'll be enough." And that was no. I, wait a minute. I don't think anybody in this room really thought it was going to be a nut. I didn't think it would go. We I thought we'd make it to the next. We were told by Gary that <clears throat> it was we would be fine. And we've been talking. We went out to those informational meetings. We told them we expected the override <clears throat> to be able to provide funding for a Two couple years. years. Yeah, and it's as Karen says, it didn't, it didn't even make it a whole year. No. So well, that's like a perfect what like that, you know if if I think that was schools also come at four and five percent yeah we'd be in, we'd be perfect right and now. I think that was also realizing you know? some of the heights income coming in which still we may still realize but we can't Austin can't put it in right now yeah. because and the marijuana rate. and I don't know if anybody has been following at the state level and everything it's not the windfall that it was what five years ago right. So the, the, the problem is still people's expectations. Right. No, no, no. I, and, they're, and they're there. Right. We set them. I mean, I sat in the room, this room, with a, a bunch of people, and we set those expectations based upon the advice that we were getting at the time. Well, and we're not, we're not going to be able to go up. I mean, this whole thing that the taxes are going to go up, that's not going to sit well. Yeah, no, I think sit. if we don't do that right, us, CPA, anything else we want to do <coughs> is going to be oh, hard. It's, it's going to be painful for a few yeah, years. It's yeah. going to be painful. But it's, all, it's also an opportunity to just swing it the right way. Yes, CPA is a tax, but it's a significantly smaller tax than if we had to do another override, and those can be but used. The CPA to doesn't cover things. our yeah, expenses. So not everything, yeah. but it could take things out of. I, what we're currently using money so for. So if, if we did the CPA a, a one year place. and then had to go ask for a, a two and a half the next year, <laughs> that would be monumentally <laughs> yeah. disastrous. Yeah. 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 Then, 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 then it would just never then it would never go because we're yeah. always gonna be in that hole. So yeah. there's one gonna have to you just one way or another. Yeah. I well, think that eventually we'll get a tax rate that's reasonable for this town. Not only that, I mean Yeah but Austin where, was where you getting your bang for your buck. Yes, you're reasonably gonna get a tax rate that's gonna help the town. 
but who can afford it? Right. Yeah. Go over to the senior center and learn the words fixed income. In I a think few years, I'm gonna. Yeah. <laughs> I think exactly. with it, you get exactly. We, our I mean, taxes you know. just went up, and our services next year are going to be level services. Right. Mm -hmm. I think Austin brought up a point that is kind of hard to see, and that is we have. With the projects that are going on right now, we have a lot of revenue in the future coming in. When Harmony Homes gets fully utilized, you're probably looking at 800000 a year coming in from taxes just from that alone. The 142 units, that's a lot of money. Ma marijuana will at some point go. We are, and I was looking over the sheets. It's not going to be nearly what it was five years ago. You know what? They're everywhere. If it's like a dairy can, queen. I'll tell you something. If we can make, if we can get more than 40000 that Devereaux gives us, I think that's a win. Because sure. Devereaux gives us nothing right oh, now. Oh, well, speaking yeah. of that, can, okay. I, can I bring up a subject? That no, no, no. That no. the Devereaux? <laughs> yeah. Well, has anybody in this Devereaux thing with the, the 19... Children that are going to additionally add to the burden of Rutland. Has any when we go to our little Devro Day up there, we have their coffee and their eggs in there. Or they butter us up and then give us the forty thousand dollars. We got to make sure that we kind of stick our hand out a little bit. And if you like me to go along, I'd love to stick my hand out <laughs> because they they're getting a deal and they're getting paid and they're not helping us. So I think. We maybe have to have a sit down with them and say, "Hey, look." They hit the lottery landing in Rutland. What's that? Lot. I said they hit the lottery when they oh, landed yeah. in Rutland. I mean, how many pieces of property do they have now? But you see, they wouldn't have. A problem is it's not Devereaux; it's the governor pushing 19 people on Devereaux. Well, but and, and yeah, giving them the money to do it. So the governor didn't care about our town. I don't care how but whatever the, the governor is didn't care. We're going to put these people over here. We're going to pay them. We're going to play a place in Worcester. You guys fend for yourselves. I called the rep on this. They didn't even know. Had no idea the governor put 19 people in Devereaux. Governor was tightened up on it. Shame on them. Does not know that. Exactly. <laughs> Shame but, on them. <laughs> but there's got to be some transparency down there. So when you start using, when you start doing that, you're creating a hundred thousand dollar cost of the town. Basically, somebody should know. They but, should pass it. But on. here's the thing. I mean, nothing. I I love this. I went to the meeting with the Northboro guy that went through this. But if you got handed this, most j j you know normal people in town are not going to read this. No, oh, no. So if the, if the rep got handed this, they're not <laughs> going to read it. Who's all this for? <laughs> <laughs> you're going to get the award. You're going to be <laughs> all excited. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it would have been no much easier with a four-page spreadsheet. For the 19 kids, either. Devereaux over the years has done more, taken, we've given them more than they've given us. Right. Well, I think we've heard, we've heard that improving communication with Devereaux on, from administration side is important also. And so Devereaux has had some staff turnover and generally it's been, the public safety chiefs, I think, that have been the main points of contact. But Devereaux has had some turnover. We clearly have had turnover. And so now maybe we can have an opportunity to have to engage in conversations and look at the numbers and where where are the students going to school and are they and and how is it playing out and what are the costs and and go in data driven. Well what it at one of the meetings, you said Deborah owns how many percent of the property in town? Yeah, that's the other point I was going to make. You brought, it, you brought it up at what? Properties, I think. You, yeah. you, you yeah. brought it up at what percentage? And I want to say it was 20. I think you said it, one of the selectmen. It was, it was a lot higher than I thought it was. So, I mean, we figure out 20% of what our taxes would be if we got taxes on that because they pay a significantly. I mean, it's not 61A. It's not agriculture. It's just. Have you been up to the main campus? I it have long, long, enormous. long time ago. I don't know what the acreage is, but it's <laughs> yeah. enormous. They just sold a new building last year. Yeah. yeah. So, I yeah. mean, you go in, like you said, data-driven. Listen, this is what we're not getting, and this is what yeah. we're expected to do. And could you maybe help a little bit and more? Similar, it's the same at the state level for all the state-owned land with mm -hmm. the pilots. I think this past, past fiscal year, there was a significant up to the yeah. pilots, but 
it went from like 80,000 to 100 or so. Right. Like, it's still negligible. And I think they have about, I think the state has about, what, 40% of land in town or something? Like, it's almost half of the land in town is owned by the state. And but they don't have anybody that's utilizing her. That land is open land, correct? I believe the federal land is not. Yeah, there's no state there's housing no, or anything. There's no state housing right, or anything. No, no, right. So it's there's no one, one coming yeah, in few, and expecting something. Isn't those municipal houses down on, there's a few in town that, that the one on uh, Maple Avenue, right by the daycare, isn't that state property? You're talking the condos? Yeah. Is it? No, I, know what I, know. Know. I, I know what you're talking I don't know about. What, no, 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 no. The, the, the one that has the like special needs. Residential special needs house. And there's, yeah. oh, oh, right. there's a few of those around. But I thought that they were all oh, really? private. I'm not 100% sure. No, that, that one That's is. No, that state is. State there's is. one down on. Um, I sneak them in There's one on Wachusa Street. There's one down. They're not. 168. You're just off 68 up the hill there on the left. There's a few of them. Yeah, yeah. But I thought some, at least That's a few of them were private. So they're not, I mean, because a big thing is it's a school. No, they they might be a run private. You're not making the, the money with the taxes the, with the, the kids state. anyway. And now <laughs> and the less one taxes, it's even worse. Yeah. Yeah. It's probably. really how much of those people that are not. So we're doubling your tax bill because we got to pay for two kids now. So yeah, you're out of luck. <laughs> That's, I know you asked that yeah, at the last meeting. That's something I haven't explored. We're going to start getting it out. What do well, I'm going to be interning for you soon, helping you oh, with your... How's it? Your, oh, yeah. You, you, you I didn't, didn't know that. No, he I mean, was asked. I you can even go up and intern him. I'm not. Your busy time. He lo he's looking for interns to fill in the... Uh, <laughs> the senior work-off program. No, no. Yes. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, the, uh, yeah. Survey. the survey. The yeah. survey. He's looking Perfect. for an intern to help fill in the data from the survey. So, Again, my, my point in bringing it up, that was... What was the original question? Yeah, that's <laughs> That's the original fun. question was, will someone please make sure when we go up for coffee and tea at Devro oh, yeah. to put your hand out? My point was, that is an unknown that just happened that we never factored into next year's budget. That's the impact. So forget the 600000 if you're close. That's not real now. Well, and that would be hypothetically, that would be for Net the year after. Year after. The year after. Yeah, yeah, 25. So yeah. Up to, if, they're, if they're 19 or more are still there by October 1 of this calendar year. As long as they don't have more ambulance calls or police calls. Can I just, yes, yes, I, th and this is just, if this must be a typo. <laughs> what page are you on? On page 18, <laughs> we're looking at that. That 620,000 we've been talking about. It says they have free cash. For yes. No, and that's fixed online. I apologize. All right. That should be for FY25 budget. But I spent hours printing these and then realized I had a typo. My apologies. I would have been so mad if you were Oh, I was. <laughs> Don't you have white out? Well, it's on the budget. <laughs> <laughs> I like that tape. <laughs> I mean, it's not that many. Come on. You yeah. could have gone and fixed it. What, what percentage of free cash is that expected to be? A substantial amount. We have about 157, uh, 130,000 left remaining. If Still we about 40 percent, 35, 40 percent. No, like no, 70 percent. Yeah. If we have 135 left, remaining left. left. So if something yeah. Yeah. significant yeah. happens, yeah. you don't have it. That? Yep. 80 percent. Can you change that on one? It's scary. Um, this one. Okay, because I printed it this morning and it's in there, and I'm like, wait a minute, I just okay. want to let you know. <laughs> yeah, there's also like your page numbers are off, but like towards the end they're off. Um, but just here, I can get you that exact number real quick. Thank you, Austin, and department heads and staff for all the time and effort that you put into it. And it's unfortunately not the news that we wanted to hear, right. and I think it's the nature of the MMA, it's all the smaller communities, the bedroom communities are facing the same thing. That if you don't go in with a well thought out override, like a, and that's why I'm excited that we have long term financial planning in place now so that we can have a thoughtful conversation and not just the, the couple months leading up to town meeting have to figure everything out and hope that what we're throwing at the wall sticks right. and is okay. Right. Um, I think this past year was more thoughtful than previous years, yeah. for sure. Um, but I think that there were even concerns from a number of us that was that going to be enough to actually last as long as what we were hoping it would. Um, <coughs> And I think I said it in a number of meetings, like, I'd rather ask from, I personally would rather fund more and know that 
it's going to last than fund this and then not have. Well, that's what that we thought we were right. doing. Right. And with right. The right. Right. And now. When it was more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's just over eighty percent of free cash. And so I think now having like a finance team and with a full-time assessor in and every that we can hopefully have more again data-driven process in advance it's a you know the town is the town is growing there's more young people in town mm -hmm. still a lot of people you know that are on fixed income yeah. <clears throat> that are going to be impacted by whatever right. happens right. Mm -hmm. right. so Right, and this that's is, this is what I hear when I go over to the seniors. Yeah, yeah, they I are just very concerned about them. Very right. concerned. And I know other communities have have created funds on their own that then individuals, um, fixed income individuals can, or people in need can apply to these funds. But again, it, it takes money, and right. some of them put did it with ARPA. And you know, I think I had asked at one point if some of the real the realization from the Heights property sale could be put aside to a fund that then is a certain amount of free cash every year is committed to that fund yeah. and it was not necessarily the right use of that money so I think that there's opportunities there and we need to try to be creative and think but there's still a, a cost to so, so we've been having this conversation around this table yeah and because of Austin's work we got a lot of data. Mm -hmm. Karen's point was, the book is great, but not a lot of people are going to read it. And so it's going to become a function of our ability <laughs> to be able to get out there and do what we did last time mm -hmm. and make sure that people understand we're not looking to hurt anybody, but there are mm -hmm. things that, we need, that need to be done. Right. And I think, I think Alex kind of alluded to this, but we've hit to a point in town that for what we pay in taxes and the services that we receive are are significantly mismatched. Right. And you can look at other communities and, and see that also. Right. And so if we are are not comfortable with where we are tax wise, then we we literally we genuinely and this was conversation last year, then we genu genuinely need to look at what services we're willing to, to give up. Yes. And that's, that's a true. very hard conversation, and nobody, everybody took heat when it was even mentioned last year. It, and was it wasn't an impossible conversation. Right. But nobody wants to pay five thousand dollars more. Right. You know, twenty five hundred dollars now, and right. I'm telling you, it, it just becomes a conversation. It becomes right. Right. how you talk to folks, right. and that's where we're going. There you go. Yeah. Have, have we come up with a creative way to start? realizing the benefit of the money that we got from the sale of the land to our homes up there? Um, because no, that I, money's kind of stuck, right? We can't spend it. There's a couple of different options. So so by mass general law, we are restricted. It's certainly not free cash. Um, so we can use it to buy more land, or we can use it for projects that would be serviced by debt for over five years. So a, a building project, design for a building project, more land acquisition, okay. things like that. But we're, we're very restricted. A fire truck. <laughs> fire truck. Yeah. Fire like that. Truck. Rachel Dolan, we around. About the money from the Rutland Heights. Uh, there's been this debate we've been hearing in town that RDIC is the only one who can control how that money is spent. And I, I was under the impression, yes, it does have to go for specific purposes, such as buying land or economic development, but uh, where they have the sole say. Can somebody verify that? It still needs to go to town meeting. Right, yeah. No, it we, needs to be we appropriate. We did have somebody up there that wanted to come in with a staffing firm for a medical facility. Would have been a hundred employees, but gee, I guess people, they did a nice presentation. It would have been a great thing, I think. And after their presentation, town was excited about it, but a few people said something, scared them away, and they bailed out at the last minute. And 
So to, for people to say that we haven't had any interest, I stood up at town meeting probably eight years ago stating we don't even have a sign saying for sale for lease with the phone number. It's not listed on our MLS. It sat there for what, 12 years? Nobody even knowing anything. So there's a very big misconception still in town on who legally has the say Yes, that money can only be spent for specific purposes, but who gets to make the decision? Is it the town meeting, or is it our DIC has complete control? Yeah, so for that fund, it's, it's subject to appropriation, so it's town meeting. Thank you. Yep. I just wanted to publicly say that, so the townspeople know that. But, so to answer your question, Darren, not only that fund, one of the select board goals as well is, is we talked about ARPA, a, you know, plan for the remaining ARPA funds. We have um, a substantial amount of money of unspent articles that could be reappropriated. So one of the proposals from CIPC for the DPW garage, there's some other articles. We just did that at the special, reappropriated yep. um, you know, some money. So you know, that's also an opportunity for mostly probably projects, okay. um, capital projects and such to complete those. So. Awesome. I just, can I say one thing? I agree with you 100% as far as the Heights project, but I don't know if you watched the meetings or have been in the meetings. We have had the discussion with our DIC in regards to marketing, and it's been very frustrating because some of the members on their board felt the two properties on Maple should stay completely, don't, not even go on the market until the property up top was developed. And that could take three, four, five years. Mm -hmm. It made no sense to me. So it, it, we are discussing it. We are trying to work through the kinks. I just wanted to let you know that People because want to it put makes a strip mall in there. No, no I, but it makes no sense. You're mall, right. But you're right. That would have brought a lot of small businesses yeah. to town. No, you're right. We are looking into it. that's the only reason I'm saying this because we're all frustrated by it. It makes no sense. Like you said, there isn't even a for sale sign up. There's nothing. Nobody even knows it's there. Well, um, that's been the issue since right, the day right. one that we the, the absolutely town acquired. But well, we are, we have been talking about we're trying to trying and to work. Don't get me wrong. Now. I think this is over fifty five coming in. Yeah. But you know, um, I'm just saying there have been opportunities. Sure, absolutely. But one of the biggest thing is, as, as somebody who used to be a little bit into real estate, if people don't know it's there. Right. Absolutely. So I think we're good conversation mm -hmm. and I think we have some stuff to like look into and consider, but um, is there any other budget related? We don't have any answers as to how to, to sell it, unfortunately. Um, I will say I think Austin being very conservative and not putting in any any of the hopeful anticipated income that we're hoping to see through marijuana and or the heights is smart yep. and that practical practical mm -hmm. exactly and and what he needs to do yep. <laughs> and i think in some of the conversations last year we thought both of those projects would have been farther along at this point in the game than they are right and so does that make up a six hundred thousand dollar swing i'm not sure right. but it gets us closer right and we know what's happening at the state level budgets, and that's trickling down to the town. We aren't getting the increases that we thought we might get last year. Right. You just so. hope that the watch you sit and, and vape that doesn't go in crazy. Right. And we right. can, you know, we'll know that on the 14th. Right. You may know something before the 14th, but no. Well, Bay Path always does the net whatever the minimum is yeah. from. so yeah. they always do that so we know what that number is unless yeah. and then it's high this year because we have a significant it's high because increase. we have more right. it's not like what you see where we have the net minimum and then they hit us with this other thing now granted i expect that the transparency is going to be much better it was much better even last year yeah, yeah. new superintendent mm -hmm. yeah i agree i and agree but I, he also said last year that there were a lot of things that hadn't been done right, so That's he right. was going to have to do it. So yep. I, mean, I get it. Transition. I don't like it, but I get it. <laughs> um, the other thing is the school committee brought in um, Tracy Novick from mm -hmm. uh, Mass School 
Association. Mass School Committee Association. Yes. And she gave a presentation on how Chapter 70 school funding works yeah. in general, which um, I think Tommy Austin and I were there. And I thought I was it was there. really, yeah, I, I was like, I don't know who's yep. online. and, yep. uh, But I thought it was really enlightening. And the program is on Holden's local access television. To, uh, they recorded it. But I wasn't sure if there would be ever any interest in having her come in and give a very Rutland specific because even talking to her after the meeting, we're, Rutland is the anomaly of the five towns mm -hmm. and we always have been and she can help explain it a little bit better to us and to the community and also maybe give us ideas as to things that we can do. I think the school administration is, the school administration is very keen on working together with the five member towns um, to advocate at the state level, where the previous administration I don't think was as keen on doing that. Um, so it's, I think, things that are in the works, but not quite there yet. Nothing so is quick at the state level. Whether we like it or not, you've got to take baby steps, but we can't expect, I mean, that's right. probably a 10 year thing before right. we even see any benefits, right. face it. There's right, exactly. Everything moves so slow. But it's unfortunately it's not it's not only Wachusett it's a lot of the regional schools have issues mm -hmm. and also a lot of the not quite rural but not city schools indep independent districts are also having funding issues so and it's outside of that 95 495 belt you know and so it's it doesn't make it easier on us in Rutland <laughs> to hear that it's and hearing the that other ta uh, that other towns have that problem. I'm sorry to say, doesn't make a difference because right. if you're paying the taxes and you're not getting the services, I don't really care what my neighbors got the same problem with uh, in the next town over. Right. I care about what affects me. But I think, <laughs> I think if, that's how most everybody looks at it. But <laughs> also, and also, I think if we can work, be more collaboratively working out even within the district, the, the five member towns, but then also beyond that to push some leverage to get more a diversity of senators and representatives to understand to better understand um it it's going to be a slow process but to give you an idea just quickly on on that new growth so for example with the heights so for fy24 we had 22.8 million dollars in new growth and that added three hundred thirteen thousand dollars to the tax levy so the Heights, um, you know, I don't know what the average value of a, of a house or whatever would be. Let's say, for example, $400,000. Right. Uh, that's right, five. Five? Is Up that what there. they're at? Yeah, yeah. five. So yeah. Uh, you're the math guy. Um, you wonder why they're not selling? I, I think, have you, have I, I think that, that <laughs> estimate of like $800,000 added to the tax levy is appropriate that also depends on what your tax rate is and things like that. but um so yeah i mean that's some to your point here that's hopefully some really good news when it's done but as you know even even that that's has a delay right. too that's at you know? the end when it's done yeah. right yeah. Yeah. yeah but that also so has it's, it's going to be a lot of years it's a little bit of four or five years i was just going to say you know, every yeah. one of those yeah. houses has two or three kids in them that well, they are shouldn't. coming into this no, 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 that's over 55 it's over 55 you're talking about the over 55 okay right they still have services that you know that will be needed and they have expenses because they're old they're probably getting more ambulance calls and police calls without question they'll break a hip here there that's right so, is there any other business? That um, yes, I would like you to tell the I rest of the finance the committee who wasn't here earlier how next uh, how our budget meeting on the twelfth will go. Yeah, so because it's a very big change. Yep. Yeah, so the goal is to make sure that when you're creating this document, you have that well in advance of your um, public hearing. So this is um, well, I sent it last night, so technically that counts. Um, 12 days in advance of preparation time so you can um, review this and ask any questions. So we're hoping to receive questions and I'll send something out to each of you. Uh, we're hoping to receive you know, some written questions if you have some you know, very generic ones. Hey, what is that line item for? Um, we can get those and we'll, the plan is to release answers to each of those written questions in advance of your meeting on the 12th as well. The night of the 12th, uh, starting at 6 p.m., we will give each department will be in attendance i think there's actually two that won't be in attendance but every other department head will uh and they'll speak to their budget 
they'll speak to their department, um, what their budget request <coughs> is, and allow for a conversation. Giving around 10 minutes each department um, to kind of do a, whether you want to call it budget speed dating, um, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. Um, so for an opportunity for everyone to interact with you. And then of course after that, uh, if there's some follow up that's needed for respective budgets, we can certainly work through that. But uh, certainly I know it's a different format than what you've been used to, but something that we feel um, to kind of keep this process moving along so you can get the answers you need um, so awesome. early. So if we get these questions to you that we have, then you'll get them to the department heads, so they'll be ready for that night. Yep. Okay. Absolutely. Yep. And so, yeah, if you can, um, you know, if you can think of your questions and, and send them to our office, and we can make sure the departments get the answers necessary, and then we'll send back um, a Q&A document to each of you. So public meeting. Uh, at our meetings are public, and people that show up and yep. um, have a conversation that's what's done tonight. Um, are we going to find, are we going to attempt to do a better job of advertising the fact that we're going to be having <clears throat> this kind of conversation with the department heads <clears throat> rather than waiting for a um, educational meeting later on like we did last year? Yeah, so um, I think that's certainly, I'd like to work with the, the, the FinCom um, and the select board to see what kind of the public outreach looks like. Certainly, I think we've been trying um, on social media, and I wanted to wait to put it out on the website after speaking to you tonight, advertising this publicly, and then promoting the yeah. public informational session as well. But certainly, if, if you think it would be appropriate to have a, a Sunday session, mm -hmm. or I plan on going to the senior center, um, I have a monthly coffee talk with them to present this budget as well. So. I'll do, you know, my sort of internal. You, you do that well. now. I do it already. Okay. Yeah, every month. So we should, if if that's already in place, we should think about utilizing that uh, existing plan to be able to do it. But I'm thinking more on our uh, working meetings where the <clears throat> department heads we come in and have the conversations. If we've got some answers, some questions and answers, if the public is here and they can have that hear those responses and maybe have questions themselves his plan is to have one meeting we'll have one working meeting mm -hmm. well okay I, and i understand that so well know. i certainly don't think you'll have to have additional meetings with all 15 or so department heads right i think there's probably going to be some that it's very straightforward whether it's IT, for example, that may not be a good example. But That's let's not say, a good example. <laughs> let's say it was. It's not a good example. But let's, say what, let's say it is the good example. Um, we're not going to have IT or another department that you have no questions come back for each public hearing. Uh, there may be some, probably the larger ones, that you have some more in-depth questions. We can certainly work with the department heads. But, again, this is a little bit of a different format. I recognize that this is a change. Uh, but we're trying to keep this process moving along because... Um, I think the practice of drawing a budget process out and having multiple public hearings and, and not having um, consensus on what the budget needs to be, I think we need to establish that sooner um, so then all of us can cohesively, as we're talking about this budget, when people ask what's in the budget, um, we'll know a lot sooner than May 3rd. Okay. Um, so that's so that's the goal. That's why I think I've been trying over the past few months is to whether it's sharing the fiscal projections with you, sharing where we are in terms of um, initial budget requests, and obviously tonight's meeting. Um, this is the start. But of course, if the if the FinCom, if you decide that you want to do more, I'm happy to work with you. I think last April series of meetings that were held for informational sessions were a basic, yeah, good start. Yeah. yeah. And I think, yeah. And I think we could do that. I, I'd be more than happy to do it, but again, we need to have a final number that you all agree on. Well, I realize before that. Doing those, you know, for sure. I'm just saying that <clears throat> the basic idea that was put down last year, it worked very well. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. I think one of the takeaways that I know we has been brought up multiple times that I've been here and is not a, a positive, well, it's a tough thing, but. You know the consensus is that we need to increase our revenue without affecting those who are on fixed incomes and can't can't afford an increase in. So 
I, you know, I, I don't know what that is. I know we've talked about different options last year, but nothing really stuck, obviously. And I think we need to make sure that we're keeping that in mind of, of ways that we can increase the town's revenue without affecting those who can't afford it and, and want to and need to stay. Um, so, you know, make positive movement, but not affect those who, who are, you know, can. Um, I don't know how we do that, but, you know, keep that in mind. And um, if we can figure something out to do that, it would be very helpful for the town overall, I think. Just a comment. It's a good point. I mean, it's a really good point. We brought it up last year, and we no, didn't talk about perfect. ways. We talked about a few things that, <clears throat> but there's there's no real legal way to do it. <laughs> right. Um, or to to mandate it, I should say. There's no. It's it's like, you know, one of the things that got brought up last year, I think, was like a, a everyone doing a volunteer tax, basically. And how do you get everyone to do that? And as soon as you have one person who says I'm not doing it, nobody's going to do it, right? So, um, and you know, if one or five people do it, it's not really going to make an impact. Well, but you're um, talking. You're I think you're really talking about structural kind of process. No, I'm hoping that we can create some sort of structural process, right. but <clears throat> I know that there's, you know, legality issues with stuff like that. So Well, um, but I'm not talking about the one time. I'm talking about, you know, new stuff. There's you tax on uh, real estate. Is there anything else out there that you can create as uh, tax revenue other sources? And I don't know that we've I don't know how much yeah, and, and we're honestly, I'm, that. I'm talking about taxing me higher than somebody else. I well, mean, that's, but I'm not even talking. I'm, I'm not thinking that. I, I, I'm not I guess thinking I'm I am. <laughs> one person pays more than the other, yeah. or somebody should pay less. <clears throat> I'm thinking that if there's, you know, um, some way, we should be looking at investigating the possibilities of inviting um, tax revenue into the town. Well, we, I mean, we look at that all the time. That's nothing new. Excuse me. Uh, we talk about that at every, I mean, we have the Economic Development Committee, which I don't know if that started yet. But I mean, that's, in fairness, that's talked about quite often. It's, I think it's a hard, I, and I remember one of the informational meeting that you and I were at. Right. People were talking about that left and right, and it, it, it was, But this, you know, I mean, you and I, and, and the folks here, I mean, we've got some ideas and things, but we don't have what, might be the experiences from maybe a larger town mm -hmm. or a, a different section of the country. I don't know. Maybe there are things out there. I, I don't know. I certainly don't know. But also, a lot of those things need to get approved by by the town. I, I remember the, the one person at that informational meeting was like, well, if I need more money, I just go get another job. And I was like, well, we can't just go get another job. That's not really a possibility. If we need, want to do something as a town, the town has to approve it. Mm -hmm. And so if half the town says no, then we can't do it. And we're, you know, what do we do then? You know, right. so it's, it's not as simple as just going and getting a, a part-time night job. Um, it's, we don't have that option as a town. I mean, I, I agree with you. What's the population of over 65 in this town? About 20%? I think it was higher last year. It's higher than the number of, it's higher than the school kids. Right, so I agree, there has to be something done, but to hurt 30% yeah, we can't do that. You can't do right. that. Yeah. Right. But we have to Because they don't have a chance of getting yeah. another job. Yeah. They have no other right. income. Yeah. Yeah. So, so how do we fix that, that problem? Like, it's, it right. is a problem. It's, it's honestly a problem because what? this town is, is, is pulling, you know, an operation out of its butt without really the resources it needs and how do we sustainably do this without increasing the revenues but if you increase the revenues you're pushing people out of town well that you know, not not if you look at different ways different revenues i mean i'm just thinking yeah, well, we've talked about that so i mean I, I i'm not saying we shouldn't and right. i'm not but like the, the 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 ability for us to do that has clearly not taken as much strides as we need like, I, I, there's no doubt that we should be doing that, we should be looking at it, and we have been. There have been things that have happened in, those, in, in additional resources generated, but it doesn't happen overnight. What does happen overnight is saying, I'm going to pay an additional thousand in taxes every year, so is 40% of the town. Just as an FYI, <clears throat> I have family that lives in Illinois, okay? And when I was talking with them one day about schools and taxes and whatnot, and in, it was explained to me that in Illinois, in their particular area, everybody pays one price for taxes, okay? If you have kids in school, you pay a surcharge mm -hmm. for each kid, okay? 
there's a lot can be said in a lot of directions. I lived in Illinois. I loved that. Illinois yeah, for that really, reason. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it makes yeah. a lot of sense. I loved Illinois for that reason. I think the only problem is any of people that are saying that you know. Why are you penalizing us for having children? That's the only way that can, you know. Well, you can have human time continues, so right. it's a little also, bit of a double edged sword. People over 65 are not going to the elementary schools in yeah, town. Yeah, right now. It's really not. <laughs> it's it's so but we had yeah, talked a little bit about land. like yeah. being aggressive yeah. with the town land, marketing the town land, but also like you keep hearing like what the state needs. The state keeps crying housing, housing, housing. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying put up a housing project or something <laughs> like that, but. Mm -hmm. If it's right, something yeah. that we can talk to the federal government of the state with some of the land we have, maybe a veterans home, maybe prison. well, so I, I was that? a prison. There was a prison. Well, so not a prison. Yeah. There was going to be a prison down there. I know, but that was a great that, way to like, make money. I mean, if we can look, maybe do <laughs> something with the government <laughs> before before we allow the government to come Take look it. and <laughs> stay ahead of the game right. and say, hey, listen, we have this beautiful land on highways. Is there something you're interested in building which will give us some income? And but the problem with that, though, is it goes back to what we were saying about how, how much of our land is state-owned, right? That's a one time they buy it from us, and they don't give us taxes. We don't make anything afterwards. So yes, it helps, and there's no and, and we could put some sort of agreement in place that they pay us ongoing. But, but, at, least but at the end of the day, if it's not a job creating thing where they're paying taxes on you know income taxes and sales tax and stuff like that, it, it's not. You know, it doesn't really benefit us that much if it's just a one-time sale. Mm -hmm. The the Heights project, you know, we're going to get additional property tax. That is at a reduced expense to the town because there's theoretically, no, you know, minimal children that are going to be coming through there. Um, so there's you know upside to that without as much downside as just building a normal house. Um, but we don't, you know, we want to look at sustainability, mm -hmm. um, which and again, I'm not saying that we shouldn't do that sort of thing. We shouldn't look at that stuff, but. Make sure we understand the drawbacks of that as well. Mm. well how about town owned property that <clears throat> we would probably never use? Why wouldn't we think about possibly selling that to become tax that it, it can become taxable at that point? And and I know there must be I don't know how much land we have in town, I don't know all the parcels. But maybe there's some that could be sold to somebody or sold to different entities other than the state that doesn't pay any taxes. Or a developer to put more kids in the schools. Well, whatever. So one of the things so one way or another we gotta get generate money. The one of the programs that the town is very susceptible to is forty B. Um, right now we're at two percent affordable housing. We need to get to ten to be safe from 40B. Now what is 40B? Essentially, if so a project wants to come in and build, a, I'm just going to say, for example, a 300 unit, three bedroom, so yeah, it's going to add to the school system. Um, they can virtually do it with no regard to local zoning. Now what I think a town like Rutland would be wise to do is to say to a potential developer, hey, we'll do a friendly 40B. So for example, there's a project in Sterling on the uh, Lemister line. I can't remember the name of it, but it's like a 216 unit. It initially started as condos, like three bedrooms. Right off of Route 12. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Right, yeah, right by the new right, registry. Right by, I yep. was there the other day. Where are you? Wow. What a Did they let you in? <laughs> um, so, they, so they worked with the town and the town <coughs> said, this will kill us. Um, and they negotiated. So uh, in lieu of increasing the project size a little bit, the max bedroom count is two bedrooms. Now I can say from experience, I lived in one of those complexes. I didn't see any kids. I saw nurses, I saw doctors, people like me. I have a dog, which yeah. I don't think costs anything. If anything, I pay for the dog, yeah. uh, the, the <laughs> dog license fee. So, um, so I mean the town and that, and, and I realized that that's a scary thought for, because that, you know, this, the, the thought is that it changes the character, but you can be strategic with housing. Um, you, can, you can zone it in certain places um, with some higher density that you may not even see. I'm thinking of the property on 68. Is that a good housing opportunity? I don't know. Um, but I think that um, if we engage people in a different way and say, we want you to come here, but we want you to work with us, I think that we can recognize some tax revenue in a creative way that doesn't necessarily cost us 
on the education side or you know increase our service calls for ambulance so construction development doesn't have to be housing um, right I was when I was working for a computer manufacturer in Houston they put in they called out an area and they put in two data centers 200,000 square foot data centers and these things were packed with equipment so they got the property taxes you have the personal property taxes I mean outside the box it doesn't have to be now yeah. <clears throat> they're big they were big boxy building it's <laughs> like the uh, Amazon building down in uh, Greendale yeah, yeah Greendale yeah. so uh, but that's okay. It's yeah. great taxes and fares. Yeah. <laughs> well, bulldoze the town hall if that's where they want to put it. From that empty building, <laughs> right? Three hundred thirty, I think, thousand dollars. So that's the that's yeah. the whole point. It doesn't have to be. But even thinking housing. outside of taxes, like I, I realize it would be investment on the town's part, but taking some of that commercial pro turning something into commercial property first right. of all. Yeah. But can we put an investment into that? build something and then lease it where we could get rent and that would be a regular source of income well, let's see there's another yeah but who's going to maintain it well let's it's all that's what the land built into the, the operational you know yeah, whatever the lease that's what the, the, land way, land the way the budget is we right. don't have the staff to be able to maintain our own buildings never mind another one do you explore yes. creating a, a regional redevelopment authority that has their quasi-government agency that has the ability to do things like what you're talking about yeah too. um gardner did that um the 99 plaza that was a redevelopment authority and salvador auto group public private partnership they financed um, kind of the land acquisition part and some of the development and Salvador had um, the money to be able to finance kind of the construction and business relationships and every time I drive by that 99 and all those businesses Packed. are busy. Yeah, how's the 99 always so busy? <laughs> <laughs> it's affordable, it's great food. Yeah, the I'm sorry. <laughs> My girl's Was that the second part of that? Part? I grew up on the 99. So did I. It doesn't mean it's good. Cool. It's great food for, you know, but you pay it's a good it. value get proposition. Yeah. Okay. Right. But, but to Jen's point, if yeah. you don't at least think of these things, yeah. Yeah. and you don't say in the first words out of yeah. someone's mouth next to her, if it's, well, that'll never work because who's going to maintain yeah. it? Yep. We're never going to get there. Look at, um, You're correct. The, uh, I get it. But I'm just saying we got to look outside of just our town services mm -hmm. because we can't afford it with the town services. Well, so, I think in a lot, sorry, also, I think in a lot of like, commercial leases and stuff it's all the onus is on the lessee, the lessee. right and yeah. so yeah. i mean sometimes sometimes it depends yeah it depends so. and it depends upon who you get to le lease it whether or not it gets done like look at the non-maintenance of the school buildings it falls into disrepair and then we got this beautiful piece of nothing because no one ever maintained it i mean we can push off a lot of things but things don't get happen and then it just becomes a bigger right. problem right. 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 and i keep hearing my my son a lot he keeps telling me about it. you don't have the roads you can't have the access is a problem yeah. the commuting nobody wants to commute here and we don't have i mean i don't even want to commute out of here because yeah. i commute out of here to holden and it sucks <laughs> <laughs> but i think that we could yeah you know, i've been Sorry, saying holden. <laughs> yeah. i've been saying for a few years that the traffic should, is terrible we should get creative and try to capitalize on the redevelopment worcester's doing in the kelly square area in the right. canal district because that's not that far from rutland right and that's they're marketing that towards young professionals so whether that's marketing you know trying to attract day trippers out here for our outdoor resources yeah. or or uh, yeah or to your point like a data center or something that would bring people to work right. 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 that we can lease right. out for they cafes restaurants stores yeah. that yeah. people that's, passing through that's a perfect in. way for rutland heights to be marketed yeah. i know we did have yeah. a sign up at one time Right. Mike Nicholson did put one up, yep. had the that put up, and then it mysteriously went missing. You might remember, Mike. Right? <laughs> yep. yep. Who's that guy? Yeah, who's that guy? I just yep. remember because that was yep. they got the the broker, him and Mike George, uh, Dave George got the broker in, and that's how we got Harmony Place. Yeah. I mean, there, at least point before was start throwing stuff at the wall let's we'll see what sticks mm -hmm. yeah come up with ideas i mean alex is just yeah. aggressively well, market so the alex board did uh <coughs> did uh direct myself and the town planner and we're working on developing um requests for interest 
um, for town property for economic development purposes. And they identified a, a handful of parcels. So we're, we're working on that to go out to see what is there for interest. Yeah. Um, and whether it's a local developer who's interested in something for, for economic development or uh, we reach out to some of the people in, in Worcester that have you know, a little bit deeper pockets, maybe to finance something. You know, there was a. I thought at some point in time there was a um, infrastructure development um, law <clears throat> or or uh, act that was put in place where the government was paying local communities to go ahead and do stuff. Can't isn't there something there that we could go and tap? Yeah, you so know, and say, hey, let's. How about some of that coming out? If roads are a problem, let's do something with the roads. So a lot of that we have to tie. So MassWorks is is a, a great resource for at the state level for cities and towns. Um, and having um, experience with MassWorks, a lot of times you have to tie to a specific project, whether mm -hmm. it's housing or business. So if that data center said, "Hey, I would love to move to the property on 68, but I need." Um, three-phase power and water and sewer. Right. We could ask MassWorks for the utility costs associated with that, or if they need an access road. And a lot of times you'll get the money for it because they see jobs, they see investment. Mm -hmm. um, but again, we need to have a proposal. We can't just have an idea. Mm -hmm. um, it's got to be tied to something. So, but I mean, I think um, our town planner has a lot of experience um, in economic development. So um, he's been working with the Economic Development Commission for some. Um, strategies, whether it's creating, right now we don't have a, in a business inventory or um, an inventory of available parcels, so mm -hmm. working with them on developing that, uh, like a business brochure, you know, kind of small things that we can hand out to, yep. uh, to people yep. in the community. Marketing, so, yep. Yeah, yeah absolutely. absolutely. Yep. So, so yeah. it's after 8 o'clock. Yeah, I'm so happy to continue the conversation if everybody feels that, but I also know that this could go on all night because we can just keep feeding off of everyone's ideas. I make a motion to end tonight's meeting. <laughs> I was going to beat you, Tom. Do we have a motion? Do we have a second? <laughs> second. Roll call. Matt's in, I. Second, I. Pleasure, I. Galvin, I. Whiteman, I. Select board adjourned at 8.08. I will add the IT budget um, to the budget book, and I'll send that out to you electronically as well, just so you have it. So I apologize. Who are the two departments that will be with us? Library. Make a motion to the clock. I'm worrying one other person that I'm blanking on. Can you just let me know? Because then that way I'll make sure I ask you. I second it. Still having a conversation about budget related topics, so I want to be careful. Oh, all right. So you want to keep it open? No. They're done now. But they were trying to talk about the budget. Yeah. It's kind of important information, but you know, hey. Anyway, there's all in favor of the draw. Aye. Aye. Good night. Good night. Thanks for coming. Ask if anyone's opposed.